210. All right, here we are on Antelope Island once again, climbing up uh, Freire's Peak, which is that one way up there. It's probably one of my favorite hikes uh, in Davis County. Uh, and I never really done, I uh, did this hike in the winter time. I usually do it, do it in the spring or in late fall, but never like in, you know, in the winter months. And of course I got Sarah here with me. Hello. And this is her third time, I think, or yeah. fourth, fourth time doing the same hike with me so we love it it's, it's a great little hike now this trail is about seven miles round trip maybe seven and a half if you go to the summit and it uh, gains over 2,000 feet in elevation so it's just a constant uh, up climb the entire time so definitely a great leg workout uh, and some good cardio and some amazing views. The one thing that's unique about this hike is there's not a lot of trees, um, you know, at all on this hike. That's typical of this island, except for at the tip top or like in drainages where there's some water there. But yeah, the views here you, you can see for a long time. And here's the snow. That we'll be walking in and that we're prepared for in the mud so we'll see how this winter adventure turns out so we're still close to the trailhead here um parking lots down there but this snow is probably uh about four inches deep well where there are snow packs you know over there obviously it's dry so as we get higher and stay on the north side we might see a foot of snow or more near the top there so we'll see half a mile The first uh, three quarters of a mile on this hike, it's all just uphill. Uh, kind of steep, but not too steep. Um, but after that, you have about a half mile of just flat, easy walking. And at that point, once you pass the, the cave through the rock, then it's all uphill to the top. So it just as a FYI. Okay, coming up on the first mile here, and our timer says uh, 27 minutes to go one mile. Obviously, if the ground was dry, we could probably do that quite a bit faster. Plus, we had that elevation gain at the beginning. You can see some bison right there. Right there. Just eating some of the grass. Remember not to get too close to bison there's been two what gores mm -hmm. uh, within the last couple of years people just spooking bison not buffalo bison
Buffett. What did you say? Buffett. But I didn't. I'd recommend uh, some boots, not sneakers, like we've seen people behind us use. Sure, sneakers works, but why? <laughs> Just bring boots. You can stomp through mud. <clears throat> get your your uh, step in water. Keep your feet dry. I don't know, it just makes sense to me. That 75 year old dad's glad he's going uh, this way and been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's beautiful. Yeah, it, it is, is beautiful. beautiful. It looks just like it. So uh, in the springtime, this is an awesome hike. Uh, my friend Ian, uh, who's been to Scotland and Ireland and the Isle of Man. He says this looks just like Ireland. Uh, like around April, May time, when all the hills are just green as can be. There's mile two. Look, I'm standing on top of the snow. Legolas gained some weight there. <laughs> Fat Legolas. <clears throat> like in Marvel. Uh, oh, yeah. What's that other one? That Infinity War. Is that the last one? So. Endgame. <clears throat> yeah, Fat Thor. That was pretty funny. So Fat Legolas walking on the snow. <laughs> yeah, snow's a little deeper up here. Maybe <clears throat> five inches deep or so. So right where those people are, right up there, just a little above that, is where the communication tower is. And that's at three miles. All right, two and a half miles. <clears throat> Sarah, look, there's humans above us. The humans. All right, here's the last steep section, just straight ahead of us. And then it goes this way. So maybe another uh, 10 minutes here. My heart's beating. I'm glad it's beating versus not beating. Yeah.
This view is awesome. On both sides. <clears throat> There's the true summit, right there. You can see people up there, see two of them. But we're gonna take a little break up here. I'm having a tiny low blood sugar, which I do need to get some sugar for. Okay. And Sarah needs some ribbon energy. I'm also having a little, little blood sugar. <laughs> Copycatter. <No. laughs> oh, you want diabetes too, huh? No, just a candy. <laughs> just the candy. That's all she uses me for. Just the candy. The candy. <laughs> so here's three miles. And then from here to the summit is probably another uh, 15, 20 minutes. Do you want some skinny pop popcorn? Sure. Thank you. Or do you want. Yeah. Let's see what else I got in here. Check out my awesome uh, logo there. Hello. Hey doggy. Oh, you smell our food, huh? <laughs> Alright. M&M's. Mm -hmm. More M&M's, but caramel and peanut butter M&M's. And we got some water, of course. I think this is just plain popcorn. Yeah, I think it is too. Maybe that's all I have. I thought I had Sour Patch okay. Kids too. Um, no, I'll take some M&M's here. Calories. All right, so we just had some sugar to bring my blood sugar level back up. It wasn't low. It was about 65, um, but it was on a trend going down. But uh, <clears throat> while we were waiting, I took my watch off, and it says it's uh, about 47 degrees or 47, really? 40 degrees up here. Oh, okay. But I was remarking to Sarah earlier. Just how we're at the tip top of a mountain, well, almost. Um, but mountain tops are known for you know being windy, things like that. But look how calm it is. Not even like a, you know, a weed or a brush or bush. You know, is there's hardly any wind. You can almost hear my ears uh, ringing. So we're gonna keep on going to the trail or follow this trail, which kind of goes down here and it cuts over there. And it kind of zigzags to the top of Frary Peak. Pretty popular trail. This is the part of the trail that adds the adventure to your trip. Yeah, probably. So that's the very tip top, just right there. We got it so far away. This is uh, looking south from Fray Peak. It's kind of a cool little uh, looking spine, you know. Here's the last stretch. Just looking south. Beautiful view. And then just like 150 feet to the top. Now 
Yep. Ooh. And you can see the trail down there. How it's cut into the mountain. And then it wraps around this way. And it kind of zigzags your way up just right here. To right here. How do you feel? Good. Tired. Yeah, so let's see how long that took. It's 425 right now. And we've been hiking for two hours and 15 minutes, including rests. Mm. All right, let's head back down. So let's see what time is. Sunset is at 5.42, right now it's uh, 4.30, and so <clears throat> we've been hiking for two hours and 19 minutes, maybe we can get down a little after three hours of hiking, I'm so get down in an hour. 45 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour, yeah. yeah, especially if we can like jog down the drier areas, all right, let's do it. Alright, so here's the three mile mark back at the communication tower. That took us uh, 15 minutes to come down and took us 25 minutes to go up. Here we go, three miles down. And it's, uh, let's see, what time is it? 4.47. So I'll bet we could be down by 5.30, which is a few minutes before sunset which will just round out this adventure. Perfect. Okay, there's the parking lot, there's the car. We're about three minutes away. And uh, with us going to the summit, that was a, a seven mile round trip hike that we started at 2.40, or 2.40, at 2.10, and got done at 5.49. Uh, so two minutes after sunset. So that wasn't too bad. It's about three hours. A little over three hours a round trip hike um, no one passed us on the way up so we were probably the last ones uh, hiking up for the, for the day but uh, that was a beautiful hike what did you think Sarah I thought, I thought it was great did you think it was spectacular spectacular yep. yeah what was the hardest part of the hike I've been sick all week. I was tired. Yeah, but you you did it. Yeah. So, anyways, I uh, we really enjoyed this winter hike. Uh, it was perfect to get to uh, get out, get some exercise. Um, highly recommended for the winter. And here we are.